There are five stages to every realistic character piece slash model. Reference gathering, sculpting, refining, shading, and rendering. References can be anything that inspires you or can give you information on what the character you want to create could look like in real life. References are vital to create believable realistic characters because doing it off of your knowledge can lead to big or small mistakes that can only be ironed out by using real life references. If you base your character's face off of a real person's face, keep in mind that the lower the focal length of the camera that shot the photo, the more stretched a person's face will be and the nose for example appears bigger than it actually is. Also, in my experience, profile shots are easier to read when it comes to proportions than frontal shots because of the very clear silhouette of the most important parts of the face. When sculpting your character, you should follow two very simple rules. Start rough and end detailed, and build from the inside out. You should start your sculpt off with a low resolution to lay out the fundamentals of the face and when you feel like your foundation is done, you can increase the resolution and go into more detail, refining the low resolution sculpt. If your basic proportions don't look right, no amount of detail will be able to make up for it, so make sure that you're content with the current resolution level before you go higher. Dynamic topology is pretty much vital to create characters without a base mesh, and the detailing method that works best for this sculpting method is constant detail, because you can determine with how much resolution you want to sculpt. I usually start off with a resolution of 20 and then go up to 50, then 100, 150, and for super fine details you can go all the way up to 300 or more. By the way, this simple to detail rule applies not only to faces. A great way to make sculpting anatomy easier is to do it in layers. Start off with layer 1 and add more and more layers on top of it. For the face, that means start with the bone structure, and then add the muscles, and at the end, add the fat pads and fat deposits. Every one of these layers is an important part of the face and should not be neglected when you're creating it from scratch. Splitting it up in layers lets you focus on each one of them and makes it easier and more reliable to create anatomically correct and thus realistic looking characters. Once you have the base sculpt of your character, it's time to refine it. This stage includes replacing the hair scope with a more realistic way of modeling hair, like hair particles or hair cards. In this stage you can also add stuff like accessories or clothing to refine the look of your character. The hair sculpt you've created in the sculpting process will be immensely helpful when you're replacing it later, because it is way easier to sculpt a hairstyle than creating one for example with hair particles. The sculpt can serve as a reference for the particle hair, which means you don't have to worry about the structure and flow of the hair anymore, and you can fully focus on creating a realistic hairstyle. The same layer rule you had for sculpting also applies when creating a hairstyle. The first layer is the volume layer to fill the volume of the hair, the second layer breaks up the structure of the first layer and makes it more random and detailed, and the last layer is for very fine details or to connect different patches of hair. Once the model of your character is done, it's time to add some materials. Starting with the principal BSDF node, the color, subsurface scattering, specularity, roughness and normal inputs are the most important values for a realistic looking face. In the description you'll find two links to two very useful sites talking about how to set up all the maps for these inputs. Creating these maps doesn't require to have a model with clean topology though. Instead of textures, you can also use vertex color layers to create all the different maps you need. Oh, and here's a very simple node setup for the skin bump map input. Just experiment with the scale and value to get the best results for your character. Now that your character is done, it's time to render it and show off all the awesome aspects and details of your character. There are so many ways to light and stage your model and so many types of models that it is hard to suggest a specific lighting setup right here. But to render your character you do not only need lights, but also a camera, and there's a setting that can bring a whole new level of realism to your characters. That setting is depth of field. Every real life camera has a certain depth of field, so adding it to your blender camera as well only makes sense. What I like to do is tie the depth of field focus point to an empty object that I can then place on my model by enabling snapping. This way I don't have to fiddle around with the distance value and I can very quickly determine what part of my model should be in focus. And there you go, you've successfully created a realistic looking character in Blender. If you have any more questions, just put them in the comments, consider giving the video a like if you liked it, give it a dislike if you didn't like it, and if you're interested in the whole process of how I created this female orc character from scratch, make sure to check out my live channel where I stream from Monday to Thursday and we talk about all kinds of topics regarding Blender and 3D in general. I hope you have a great day and see ya!